the electrode potentials topic from the OCR A2 syllabus. Last lesson we looked at standard electrode potentials and how they are measured when compared to a standard hydrogen cell. Today's learning intentions are to calculate a standard cell potential by combining two standard electrode potentials and to predict using standard cell potentials the feasibility of reactions. And finally, to consider the limitations of these predictions made using standard cell potentials in terms of concentrations and kinetics. From what we covered last lesson, the information on this sl slide should make a lot of sense. If it doesn't, you need to go back and go through lesson one again. Standard electrode potentials can be used to predict the feasibility of a redox reaction. When provided with two redox equilibria, the equilibrium that has the most standard most negative standard electrode potential value will be the reducing agent and donate electrons. The equilibrium that has the most positive standard electrode potential value will be the oxidising agent and accept electrons. By convention, the standard electrode potentials are written as reductions. We saw this in the previous lesson with the table of standard electrode potentials. It is not possible for both reactions to accept electrons. One half cell must be flipped so it releases electrons. It makes sense that this is the half cell with the more negative or least positive electrode potential that is flipped and donates electrons. In the slide shown, copper and, half, and, copper and zinc half cells are connected to form an electrochemical cell. The zinc has a standard electrode potential of minus 0.76 volts and therefore has a greater tendency to lose electrons and so acts as a reducing agent and donates its electrons. Copper has a standard electrode potential of plus 0.34 volts and so the electrons flow from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell which accepts the electrons. The voltage measured is the standard cell potential for that cell. We can combine two half equations to show the overall equation as shown on the slide. The following slide takes you through in more detail how to calculate the electrode potential for the cell and how the overall equation was written. Step 1. The two redox half equations and their standard electrode potentials are given as reductions. So we have zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons reacts to form zinc solid. This has a standard electrode potential value of minus 0.76 volts. The second is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons reacts to form copper solid. This has a standard electrode potential value of plus 0.34 volts. The more negative standard electrode potential needs to be flipped as it is acting as the reducing agent and donating the electrons. So we get zinc solid plus zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. We also need to flip the sign of the standard electrode potential which becomes positive 0.76 volts. Finally step 3, combine the two half equations. We do not need to multiply other, any of the half equations as the electrons are already cancelled out as there are two on both sides. So combining the equations we have zinc solid plus Cu2 plus reacts to form copper solid plus zinc 2 plus. Step 4, calculate the standard cell potential once we've combined the two half equations. The standard cell potential is the sum of the electrode potentials including their signs. So for this particular cell, 0.76 volts plus 0.34 volts equals 1.10 volts. We can use the standard cell potential to predict whether a reaction is feasible. A positive value for the cell potential indicates that the cell reaction is thermodynamically spontaneous, i.e. delta G is negative under standard conditions. In the copper zinc reaction, the value was one, plus 1.1 volts. If the standard cell potential calculated is negative, then the reaction will not happen and it is not spontaneous and delta G is positive. Here is another example. A cell is constructed using magnesium and copper electrodes. The standard electrode potentials are given below. Magnesium 2 plus plus 2 electrons reacts to form magnesium solid and copper 2 plus 
plus two electrons reacts to form copper solid. The respective cell potential values are also given. Predict the redox reaction that will occur spontaneously and write an equation for the reaction that takes place and calculate the standard cell potential. Pause the video now, have a go at the question, the answer will be on the following slide. So here's the answer. The magnesium half cell has the more negative electropotential, so it is a better reducing agent and will donate electrons. So this is the equation that is flipped. Mg solid reacts to form Ng2 plus plus two electrons. We have also flipped the sign of the standard cell potential, so it's plus 2.36 volts. Copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons reacts to form copper solid, with the standard cell potential of plus 0.34 volts remains the same. The two half equations then added, and the electrons are cancelled to generate the ionic equation for the spontaneous reaction. Mg solid plus copper 2 plus reacts to form copper solid, plus magnesium 2 plus. The standard cell potential for the, for the whole cell is 0.34 plus 2.36 which is 2.70 volts. Let's try another example. Predict the reaction that occurs spontaneously when the following half cells are combined to make an electrochemical cell. Calculate the standard cell potential, pause the video, have a go and the answer will be on the following slide. So did you guess it? The iron 3, iron 2 half cell has the least positive electropotential, so it is the better reducing agent, will donate an electron. This is the equation that's flipped. Remember to change the sign of the standard cell potential. The two half equations are added and the electrons are cancelled to generate the ionic equation for the spontaneous reaction. Fe2 plus plus Ag plus reacts to form Ag solid and Fe3+. Plus. The standard cell potential minus 0.77 plus 0.8 equals 0.03 volts. At this point I need to point out that the way that the standard cell potential is calculated is the same. It is the sum of both of the standard cell potentials regardless as to whether you have multiplied a half equation in order to cancel out the electrons. We will carry out lots of further calculations during class time. The final learning intention for this lesson is to explain the limitations of these predictions that we are making regarding whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. We have said that if the standard cell potential is positive, then the reaction is spontaneous. However, in practice that may, this may not be true for a number of, number of reasons. There may be rate limits. For example, the reaction has a high activation energy. It could be because there is a very low concentration of an essential reactant or that the actual conditions used for a reaction may be different from standard conditions used to measure the standard cell potential values. To, expect, to extend upon these limitations, I'm going to explain exactly how changes in concentration may affect the cell potential. This is going a little bit beyond the spec, but it may help to further your understanding. If you don't follow, don't worry, as long as you understand that non-standard conditions, including changes in concentrations from one mole per decimeter cubed, may affect the value of the cell potential. When a zinc half cell is connected to a copper half cell under standard conditions, the electrons flow from the zinc electrode to the copper electrode, and as we have calculated, the cell potential is 1.10 volts. The equilibrium that is set up between the zinc electrode and the zinc ions in solution is shown. If the concentration of zinc ions reduced, i.e. was less than 1 mole per decimeter cubed, then the equilibrium shifts to the left to counteract this change, and the negative charge on the electrode increases as more zinc metal ions turn into zinc 2 plus ions. This change and the negative charge and the and therefore the negative charge on the electrode will increase 
and the voltage of the cell will increase to a value above 1.1 volts. Conversely, if the concentration of zinc ion increases, then the equilibrium shifts to the right to counteract this change, and the negative charge on the electrode decreases, and the voltage of the cell will also decrease to a value below 1.10 volt. As I said, don't worry if you didn't follow that, just being aware of the limitation is sufficient. We'll leave this lesson here for you to practice writing equations and calculating cell potentials.